Hello, my name is Rainer Hanekamp. I'm a trainer and consultant at Angular Architects, and this is a series about Nginx best practices. Now, Nginx is the library when it comes to state management in Angular, and in each episode we will, we will be discussing a particular problem that you might encounter when you are using it. And by saying that, you should already be familiar with Nginx, because otherwise it might be a little bit hard to understand. This is the first episode, so we will not be dealing here with a particular problem, but I'd like to share my opinion when and why you should use Nginx. And I will also introduce you to the exercise or the demo application that we will be using throughout the whole series. So state is something that we have in our application. Users click on buttons, they type something in, we are requesting data from the backend, so things change. The first contact that we have with state management is when multiple components or services depend on the same slice of state. In that case, what we want to avoid, of course, is if component A is changing something of the state that the other components are aware of that. So what we normally do is that we centralize the state, so we move it out of the components put it into a centralized location and from there the components or services will be updated when things change. The main question is of course, how do you want to do this? How do you want to implement this? So do you want to implement this on your own or do you want to use a third party library like NGRX? So it's more or less the common make or buy decision but in the case of Nginx, I mean, since it is free, it's more or less a make or let make decision. So, yeah, either way, if you follow the path with self-implementing your own state management library, then you have to be aware of three things. First one is you have to maintain your own library, which means when your versions of Angular or RxJS are released, you have to make sure that it's still works. Then, of course, we make bugs all the time. You will have to fix your own bugs, of course. And the third part, or the third thing that you have to be aware of, is that you also have to extend your library. So um, when your application grows, there will be some new requirements for your own state management library, and you have to implement this on your own. So this is quite a lot of time that you need to spend for your own library. On the other side, if you pick Nginx, you don't need to care about the maintenance. In the Angular team and the Nginx team, they are very closely linked uh, link together, so the, they know definitely what things change and how to make the proper corrections in, in the library. When it comes to bug fixes, of course, a <laughs> much better situation with Nginx because this is an open source project, many people are using it and they're reporting bugs all the time. And of course, these things are, are fixed quite quickly. They are fixing even bugs that we, don't, that we aren't aware of that, that they even exist. And then of course, we also have the extension part. And here again, I mean, since Nginx is already used for a, such a long period of time, the way that it, is, that it is designed is that it fulfills most use cases. So you will rarely have a case where you say, oh, here is, this is something, I'm, it's impossible to apply state management or NGRX. So this is uh, something that we find very rarely. So this is definitely something that you have to be aware of. You will um, save yourself a lot of time. And then there are two further big advantages. First of all, the code quality. Of course, there are many people who contribute to this project and as a result, the code quality of that is just superior. So without questioning your skills as, 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 as coder, but uh, this is definitely a fact. The chances are quite high that the open source community can in total produce better code quality than, in, than a single person or a single group. The other thing is about the fact that Nginx can act as a guideline 
in terms of how you should integrate state management into an Angular application. We know that, that NGRX has been used by so many people over many years and all that experience that they made is really baked into the library itself. So there is a reason why NGRX is coming up with these different elements like an action reducer effects and so on and why it also is forcing you to write immutable code. So this is what I mean by experience. They know the best or the best practices how to integrate state management into an application. So you have the opportunity to stay on giant's shoulders if you want to say so. Uh, this is definitely something you should keep in mind. And of course, there are disadvantages as well. One of the major ones is the boilerplate code. NGRX requires you to write a lot of boilerplate code. Main reason is that it is split up into this multiple elements, action reducer and so on, and you usually put each element into its own file. So this is the boilerplate code that you see there. But in the long run, it must not be a disadvantage, it can very quickly become an advantage because what you see or what you will appreciate is the larger your application gets, you have a certain structure that you can always rely on. You always know where to look for when you want to, to see where is the data changed or where is the request done. So these are also some very important things. The, the second disadvantage that we hear is that it takes some time to learn NGRX, which is true. Of course, you will be faster to use your own library because you don't have to learn it. But you should also see it from the other side. If a new team member enters your team, that person, or at least there is a high probability that that person knows already NGRX. So the onboarding process will be a lot shorter. There is also a probability that this person knows your self-implemented library, but that probability is more or less zero. So this was about the why, now about the when. There exists this Shari principle, which is more or less the official list of NGRX when you should use it. But I'd like to focus on my three favorite ones. The first one is something that I have already mentioned. This is when multiple components depend on the same state. So we are talking here of a shared state scenario, which I think is the most common one. Then another one is something that derives from the first one. If you have components which are really big, and then of course you want to split up this, components into mul this component into multiple ones, maybe also into multiple services, and then you are in the same situation as before that you have from you have now multiple components that depend on the same state. So every time you are doing a refactoring and splitting up a component into multiple pieces, you have a potential use case to, in, to introduce state management as well. And the third one, which is one that I encounter quite often, is when you think for example, of a big enterprise application. They, most of the time they are dealing with large lists where we have a lot of filters, a lot of sorting options, paging and so on. Now, if you are the user of such an application and you say, well, we set five filter values, then we navigate to page number five, we click on the edit button, then we click on back. What will happen? Well, we see the initial state of the grid. We are on page one and all the filter values are set back to the default values. And that's of course not something that we want. Uh, what we want is that we, are, that we see the same uh, grid that we have seen before. And if we use state management for that, so if, if we place the filter values, the entries, the page, the information about the page into state management, then this is something that we get out, uh, that we get for free. We don't need to do anything, it just works out of the box. Yeah, so this was a little bit about my personal opinion, why and when you should use NGRX. I hope if you have been unsure so far, if NGRX is something for you that you can use, that maybe I have convinced you a little bit. And now let's continue with the demo application.
All right, so this is our demo application. We see here that this is an imaginary travel agency. And what we find here is a customer's list, which is just showing a list of customers. And of course, what we can also do is that we can edit a customer. We can save it, delete it, go back, and of course also edit, add a new customer if we want. So a very simple application actually, but enough for us to have something to work with. Now let's take a look at the code. So the whole thing is here implemented by using an X, not with the native Angular CLI, but with an X on top. Why? Because I don't see any reason why one shouldn't use an X these days. That's the reason. And the, there is of course a customer module itself, which if we take a look at it, which uh, consists of three different URLs. We have one which is just representing the list. This is the custom must component. And then we have two further paths or URLs where the user can add or edit a, an existing customer. State management, of course, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. We have here the store and the effects module and the the various elements are all stored inside of this plus state directory, so we are following the normal conventions. The reducer itself it or contains the state, which is just a list of customer, nothing else. And since this is a CRUD application, we have for each possible operation, so listing, updating, adding and deleting a separate action. This action is of course then also processed in the reducer and when it comes to the communication with the backend we have our effect which is doing that as well. Of course selectors for our components is also something which is very important and if we take one look at the customers itself, at the customers component itself, so with see here which should so we, we, I hope that we don't see here anything which would, that comes as a surprise. In our constructor we are dispatching the load action and of course the customers component is also requesting the customers from the state and in the detail component where we are showing the detail form we see here that in ng on init we are checking if this is a use case where we add a new customer in that case we create a new observable of an empty customer otherwise we just fetch the existing one from our state and use that one. In this component I'm using ngx formally which is a library built on top of reactive forms. Quite a very good library so if you don't know it yet definitely check it out and the way that it looks in the HTML is th th that I just have here the form form and that generates all the template which is required to display the form. So that's it more or less. One final thing, one last thing, the HTTP client is here overwritten with a mocked version and this means that our effect can just use the HTTP client as normally, they can just send requests but since there is a mocked HTTP client in place, it will intercept this, this request and not send it to a real backend, but return some mocked data. So the big advantage here is that you don't require a backend frontend. The frontend application is just enough. So a quick outlook for the next episode. As we see in our customers component, every time, every time this component renders, it is reloading the data from the backend. And this is a problem because the data can already be in the state, so there is no real need to reload it. And we will see how this can be solved in the next episode. More or less we are done for now. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.